Hey guys, those are my bobbles. Uh, maybe I'll talk to Isabel. Maybe we'll give some away. Uh, maybe we'll do some Patreon stuff. I always like to do speculations for Patreons because it's a lot more fun for them. We have one, we have two Patreons, but one of them gets cards, the other one just gets like stuff. Today I'm going to talk about artwork and how to speculate on artwork. You might think this is like a crazy, crazy video, but I'm going to show you that it's not as crazy. So this card is like free, two to three dollars. This one is four to five now. And the only reason I bought so many of them, as I, you can probably assume, is the artwork is gorgeous on these cards. Uh, this one, I'm not positive what the promos are, but there was a time that every Walmart, you know the free packs in Walmart? This was actually a very pretty promo, so I was like, yeah, I'll buy some free packs. Uh, and this is Journey to Nowhere for something else. It's a very expensive Journey into Nowhere, actually. Uh, in foil, it's one of the most expensive cards. I don't know if it's been reprinted lately. All right, so a lot of you wanna know how to speculate. Uh, the answer is speculate on what you want because every time something fails and it will fail, like most people are not gonna say, oh, I failed in this speculation. Let me publish this online to tell everyone I failed. Right? They're only gonna talk about these cards that have done, I don't know if this card has done well. It used to be sort of pricey, but the promos were very interesting. I wanted to show off the promos. It is my favorite artwork. Falia is not my favorite artwork, this is. Uh, and then I would rank this as two, and then this as three. So anytime I have the ability to pick them up, I will pick them up without a doubt, because I just love the artwork. If you speculate on stuff that you love, like Falia's, Malera's, um, what else, Stoneforge Mystics, I made out, the only bad thing was I sold all of them to Strike Zone, and I, I sold them for a lot of profit, as I made a video, but it's kind of sad because there were so many of them. And now to reclaim that many of them is like impossible. So collect what makes you happy. Like if you're a collector, you naturally will just have 42 bobbles. It just happens. It's not like I bought out bobbles. There's no bobbles to buy out. Like it's not a card that I would be like, oh, my legacy's back. Oh, let, let, let me go online and buy all the bobbles. No, I don't know why it will happen, but if the bobble is five, ten dollars, just like Misha's bobble, I have a dozen or two of Misha's bobbles because I play during Coat Snap. That's when I have all these fat packs from Coat Snap because, in my opinion, the fat pack from Coat Snap is the most beautiful artwork. It's an angel and a dragon, but it's like an ice angel and stuff, and it's an ice dragon. It's nice blue and white, so it's like North Carolina colors. And I've always, I went to NYU, so we were purple and something else, but. North Carolina, Michael Jordan, right? That's what I think about. So I've always loved their colors, uh, the Tar Heels. Uh, but anyway, that's why I bought the fat packs. I bought a ton of fat packs and that's why I'm buying a ton of Eldrick Moon fat packs. You might ask, oh, you know, is there any reason you're doing it? No, I just like the artwork on the fat pack. And I like Liliana, The Last Hope a lot. Like if I had to buy into a card now, and it's really interesting because we all know she's rotating out She's been the most expensive card in standard for a very long time without fail. And overall, like after Emiko got banned, you did have Grim Flare, which is seeing less and less play, but still viable in modern. Collect stuff that makes you happy. I've always had that philosophy and it has served me very well. It has served me incredibly well. So I love Knight Exemplar. It's a Lord. It's a beautiful piece of artwork uh, from Jason Chan. And I love this promo. So what happened was this was worth about, uh, soda at the local store is 75 cents. And I just traded, I just used my store credit to have everyone who got a promo. Actually our store was very good because they gave everyone two promos because that is how awesome the store was. So I traded a piece of candy from the store, of course. So the store benefited from this quite greatly. And, and that's why I'm a big fan of supporting stores, even if you cannot buy stuff like at the from the store. There are ways to broker negotiations that make a lot of sense. For for instance, everyone got two copies of this. They were super happy. They got soda and like a, a candy bar. And then I got to keep all of these things. And I knew it was, it's like the most beautiful card. 
It's so beautiful. Like, is the card amazing? Not the best? No. Same with Predict. I have four copies of Predict that I have to now find from... So I believe they were with the Odyssey cards, but they were not... Um, I'm not sure where they are at this moment in time. I'm guessing that there is a box in storage, or not in storage, we don't, I don't have storage anymore. There's a box in my closet, and it has a lot of like bulk foils, and it's in that box because there's no way it's in any better box. So there's different types of boxes, right? Binders are for cards that, in my opinion, are worth $5 or at that time are worth $5. Now, it's kind of funny to look at some of them because they're not worth that much today. But at the same time, some of them are worth $10, $15, $20. Now, the non-binders, non-sleeves are cards that just don't have or not worth more than $5. And the foil predicts are worth 40 bucks now. So I need to dig them out figuring out where they are. Uh, they're not in the blue foils where I keep all my blue. I, I'm pretty sure they're not organized. But there was a time that I was buying and collecting everything Rebecca Gra, Gray, Gray, Gra, And uh, this happens to be one of her artworks. And in my opinion, it's the most beautiful one of the bunch. Like um, she has some amazing artworks, which is not focusing right now. Oh, I think that's a person. Yeah, I think these are people. <laughs> anyway, that is it. Uh, I wanted just to go over my collecting tips. It's collect what you love. It's the same thing with philosophy in life, right? Do what you love and the money will come. I've never had an issue like bobbles. I'll show you some more cards ahead. Uh, and particularly like what sets. Like I've been very good and I can tell like if a set is very good and then I just buy into that set quite heavily. And then suddenly all the uncommons, commons, rares spike up in price because I knew it was good. Uh, and a lot of you ask questions like, is Armor Cat good? Is Hour of Devastation good? The answer is no. Not compared to these older sets. Like I just knew that these older sets would have a tremendous amount of value and I didn't really need to buy individual singles. I could just open boxes, have a good time drafting, have a good time doing sealed have a good time doing kitchen table and eventually the cards would pay for themselves and that's what happened anyway that is it bye guys